Hello and welcome back to the second of two screencasts on Maple and Linear Algebra. In the first screencast we learned how to enter in a matrix and do some stuff to it and uh, in this second screencast we're going to learn how to do a whole lot more stuff to matrices by way of what's called a package. So we're going to do a quick overview of what a package is, uh, the Linear Algebra package, and then uh, looking at a few very important things that you can do uh, with the Linear Algebra package. Well, the first thing you need to know about packages uh, is what Maple will load when you open it and what it does not load. Maple has an enormous amount of functionality to it, uh, so much so that if we loaded everything that it's possible for Maple to do when we open the program, it would flood our computers. And so Maple only loads up a small portion of what it's capable of using uh, in its memory when you open it up. And if you want anything past the standard sort of core functions that Maple will perform, you have to tell it to add them on separately. And we do that by way of what's called a package. There are many packages in Maple. These are all just groups of functions that are more or less grouped together by, uh, by theme or by subject area. Uh, and uh, linear algebra is going to be one of our packages that we use. So we're going to load in a package, a large collection of functions that are used for linear algebra purposes. And the way we load any package in is to use the with command, with parenthesis, and then we're going to just type in the name of the package we want. In our case, it's Linear Algebra, that's a capital L, capital A, and no spaces, close parenthesis, and semicolon. Now when you hit return, uh, you're going to see a whole lot of blue stuff show up on the screen, and this is, uh, all those things are the pack, or the uh, functions that uh, were just loaded when we loaded in the package Linear Algebra. So uh, it's thinking, and it's loading it in. And there it goes, and we're going to see a lot of things that we're now able to do. Just keep scrolling, because there's a lot of them. All these are brand new functions that are not loaded into Maple when you fire up the program, but uh, if you need them, there they are. There's a lot of stuff here. Whenever you load in a package, it automatically lists each function separately. And if you don't want it to actually list the output, uh, see that semicolon here? Just change that to a colon, and it'll just suppress the output. Okay, so now we have all these uh, linear algebra functions available to us. We're just going to learn uh, four of these functions right now uh, that are of immediate use to us. Uh, and to introduce two of these four, just think I want to refer back to the screencast one. In screencast one, we learned how to enter a matrix uh, by specifying a bunch of vectors and then making those vectors into the columns of the matrix using the matrix command, and that was pretty easy. But a lot of times we want to do the reverse of that. We have a matrix in front of us, and we want to pull out a row or pull out a column. So uh, there's no function in Maple uh, in its plain vanilla format that does that, but there are a couple of functions in the linear algebra package, which we now have available to us, that will do so. So let's go down and uh, find our palette, there it is, and enter in just a random, uh, let's call it, do a 4 by 7 matrix. So I'll just dial up these dimensions, there we go. Make sure this is switched to random, and then uh, I'm going to call this matrix A, and then I'll just say insert. Okay, so it's going to insert a 4 by 7 matrix. I'll enter that in by hitting enter, and now it knows what A is. Now let's suppose for some reason I wanted to pull out the second row of A and make that into a little uh, 1 by 7 vector on its own. Well, I could enter it in by dialing this down to 1 row and 7 uh, columns, but that's kind of hard work. So what I'm going to do instead is use a command not available normally, but now available since I've loaded the linear algebra package called row. I'm going to type in row, comma a, or a, comma two, and as you probably can guess, this is going to pull out the second row of my matrix, and there it is. Pretty simple. We can do a similar thing with, with columns using the command column. If I type in column a, say five, uh, this is going to remove the fifth column of A, that's right here, and uh, return that to me as a 1 by 4 or a 4 by 1 vector, you know, often very useful. So row and column, and again, these are two functions, real simple, but they're not very commonly used, and so Maple doesn't bother to load them in just for everyday usage. But if you really want them, you go and load the linear algebra package. Now, the next two functions we're going to look at are of probably much, much greater importance to us 
uh, especially if you're taking Math 233 right now, one of the things that we're doing in the class is looking at uh, row reduction, taking a matrix and reducing it to echelon form or reduced echelon form. And of course, Maple uh, will do this. It's not something that everybody does every single day, and so it's an optional package or an optional function, and we load it in through the linear algebra package. So to uh, row reduce our matrix, let's keep our A matrix from up here. Let's take this matrix all the way to reduced echelon form. Now the way we do that is to use the command reduced row echelon form, parenthesis, the name of my matrix, close parenthesis. And I'll just hit enter. And uh, there it is. It's so big that it kind of breaks it up over the line, but that's it nonetheless. If I go and do a zoom myself out from 200% to 100%, uh, you'll see the matrix in this sort of regular form. So that's really row reduced to reduced echelon form. We see that typical diagonal ones and zeros pattern happening right there. So let me go back to my large view here so you can see the uh, commands I'm typing. And uh, the thing to remember about this function, and first of all, it's very long, reduced row echelon form, capital R, capital R, capital E, capital F, and no spaces anywhere. Otherwise, that's very simple. That's how we take a matrix to reduced echelon form. But suppose we didn't want to take it to reduced echelon form, but just plain old echelon form. Well, uh, there's a command for that, too. And uh, it is not echelon form, as you might expect. It is Gaussian, G-A-U-S-S-I-A-N, elimination. And that's capital G, capital E, and no spaces. Gaussian elimination is a synonym for row reduction. In many books, you'll see those uh, see Gaussian elimination used instead of row reduction. So what this will do is just simply reduce it to echelon form. And again, it's gonna, it's a pretty big matrix. I uh, see so it just gives it as a list of row vectors. So I'm the zoom out to 100%. You can see uh, a little bit better here. So we have this uh, nice echelon form of my matrix here. So row reduce echelon form. for true reduced echelon form of my matrix and Gaussian elimination for just plain old echelon form. And there are many, many, many other functions besides here in the linear algebra package and we'll be looking at them uh, just whenever they come up. And now we know how to load a package and use some of the functions in the package, especially these two and the row and column functions. So go off and enjoy your use of Maple. It makes things a lot easier, and uh, we like to have this around very, very much because it helps make our work go by that much faster.